Developers, developers, developers. You've got mail. Made. Greetings and welcome, everyone, to a brand new podcast starring me. Well, you look unhappy already. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> no, no, we are two seconds to a brand new podcast, and you look at the screen like I'm killing a cat right now. No, it looks fine. Then why do you look like that? Um, I can't take anything seriously. <laughs> welcome, everyone, to a brand new podcast starring me, Ken O'Connor. Oh, and I'm Brian. Welcome back. To my podcast you do this on every single every time we brought you on tag every mm-hmm. time i brought you into an amiibo unboxing mm-hmm. you always feel like yo it's me brian i'm back doing this yeah i have all my followers how many followers do you have um my mom says she likes my content how sad would that be if there was someone out there like an instagram or twitter who had a single follower and it was just their mom so they got like every like every retweet re- retweet was the just mom. from their mom what if their mom was actually a social media promoter and was more popular than the person that she's promoting? That's even more sad then, because if she's retweeting and sharing what, like, she, like, her son is doing. I think that's a symbiotic relationship, that's what that's called. Neat. All right, welcome back to my podcast. <laughs> yes, this is a brand new podcast me and Brian are uh, trying out. This is the pilot episode. We call this podcast TechMate. Because, like, Checkmate and Brian's my tech mate. Yeah. And the idea for this came from the notion that I had that I have fallen behind in technology. The really, one thing that I thought I would never... Really do. badly, too. Uh, Kenny doesn't know what a HomePod is. And we're here to educate him on what in a HomePod is. In all fairness, is. most people don't know, what, don't know what a HomePod is. You're right. Not a lot of people bought a HomePod. But on the plus side, I'm going to teach you what a HomePod is. <laughs> It's basically just an Alexa, right? It's an Alexa with iTunes, like, in Siri support. We check. We literally just looked over at the Echo that's I am pl- I unplugged here for that oh, very reason. You? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's kind of like that. But doesn't it, like, not do anything? Do you like Siri? She's okay. I don't, I don't, here, I don't use Siri much besides dictating text, text messages when I'm driving. Like, I'll, I have, like, the button in my car. Where, like, okay, I'll, that's fair. That's all I use her for. Cool. That was that's probably all you would use her for on a HomePod too. Then isn't it a really good speaker though? Oh yeah, it's pretty dope. So <laughs> compared to like, compared to a Sonos. Um. Okay. So I think that's you're looking at a device that is three hundred and fifty dollars. The Sonos. No, the HomePod. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. Um. And when you look at a Sonos, you can get a Sonos for like two hundred bucks. A decent Sonos with Alexa in it. Um. So when you compare the prices, it's 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 a hard sell for three hundred fifty bucks. And this is something that came out back in February. Yeah. Um, from what I know, uh, and looking on Twitter, not a lot of people own them. People like to joke that they sold like what six of them. It's something that people don't buy, um, only because there's so much more functionality in um, a speaker that made by Google or. Uh, Amazon. Yeah. Um, so when you look at HomePod, uh, you get Siri, which is, I'm going to say, like fourth place in the, the smart assistant. Ooh, ooh let, let, let's, how, how do you rank the assistants right now? Oh, uh, Google is number one. Really? Yeah. My mom has the uh, the Google one at her house, and yeah. I've only played with it a couple of times. But like, what makes the Google one so much better, you think? Google search. That's it. That's all it is. Because when you have... Are Siri and all the others not tapped into Google at all? Like, when I ask, like, Alexa a question, where is she going to, to like, get her information? Is she checking Amazon's entire network? Like, this is an Amazon question, yeah. so I don't know. It's, I think it's proprietary. I'm not entirely sure, but when you, all I know is when you want to search something, you have two options. It's pretty much either it's Bing or <laughs> Google. Or um, Ask Jeeves. No oh, God. They should make an Ask Jeeves Alexa kind of looking thing. But isn't that what Bixby uses? It does. Is that what he act, is that actually a thing? Or no, I'm just messing oh, around. Okay. With it. <laughs> like, did I really not know about this too? This is the problem here, folks. This is why we started this. What's a Bixby? Um, yeah. So when you when you think about like these smart assistants that are in our homes and things that we use, like I have an iPhone. I use Siri all the time. 
and by all the time it's when i have to yeah uh if i had uh the ability to say okay google from my iphone and i could access like google servers i do that all the time because everything i have lives in google my calendars my contacts um but that's that's the big issue right it's the fact that all these are proprietary and none of them want to gel together right like even the most basic things like i have like the fitbit app on my iphone it will not work with the health app built into the iphone unless i download a third party app for five dollars to get them to sync together and really all it's doing is one app is copying fitbit and then syncing the info into the health app because fitbit does not want to proprietize with itunes at all right and then there are things like uh, iTunes has the whole thing where the oh the app store in general Apple, Apple in general where anything sold through the app store in through an app Apple wants a cut of it so like Twitch for example you cannot get, do Twitch subs or Twitch bits through the app on the iPhone currently because Apple wants a part of that money and Amazon who owns Twitch is like no we're not doing that but just recently they updated the Android version of Twitch where now you can do subs and bits through the Twitch app on Android phones but it's a dollar more because it's Google's bit now on the Android taking from that. So like if Amazon, Apple, and Google all played nice and didn't charge each other for this stuff or have the apps all work together it'd be a much better environment. They wouldn't do that though because that's... Right. That, I think the way you have... This is where it goes back to like the main root of everything is the ecosystem where Apple has a solution for everything that, you know, it, your Fitbit, Apple Watch, you, you know, if you wanted it to work seamlessly, you'd get Apple's product and you pay for Apple's products. Um, where you have Twitch uh, being an Amazon affiliated. It's, it's, it was bought by Amazon a couple years ago. So where you have something like that, where they're probably going to bake in, like, tip this streamer 20 bucks from an, an Echo device. Right, you're probably going to be able to do that at some point because they'll bake it in, oh, that's and you dangerous. have that. Yeah, it'd be dangerous. They'd be like, <laughs> so tip twenty bits to Kind K No One. When I can lay in bed and just shout at something to yeah. like, hey, give this person like something, like, I would do it. I think so. You have a ecosystem where um, Amazon wants you to be in that ecosystem. Yeah, and they have that ecosystem because of the products that they sell and the services that they offer. Um, you're right, so I can't, like, sub or um, provide bits to anyone from an, an app on my phone. Um, but when you have um, a service that's offered by the, the owner, they're going to make it easier and easier, and you try and buy into that They ecosystem. want the path of least resistance when it comes to getting something. That's why, like, one-click options are so right. prevalent now. Yeah. So we kind of got off track. Going back to if you had to rank the assistance. So you said Google's, Google's number one for you. Yeah. Below that, where do you, where do you go? Amazon. Amazon, yeah, Alexa. Yeah. Um there ha- I <laughs> it's, so I'm going to give Siri uh number 3. Okay. Where she deserves number 4 because there's probably some assistant out there that's better than her that I don't know. Yeah, about. I'm trying to think of another one besides those 3. Right. But I can't, no, I can't think I of I honestly anything. it's one of those things where um, Oh, Cortana. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> She's number four. I don't care how bad Siri is. Cortana is number four. Uh, yeah, she gets number... Uh, she. <laughs> Yikes. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where I guess the ecosystem of Siri is like, if you use all Apple products, maybe it makes sense. But I think the one fallback of Siri is that it doesn't use or track your uh, audio. So it won't record you. So whereas Google constantly listening, um, and Amazon constantly listening and learning. Whereas Siri, everything's encrypted. Like it'll send that that request to a server and then it's gone. So they can't learn or grow from that. They they're working in a room with a bunch of people trying to develop something. It's sad that that's that's kind of what people want though. Like recently with the whole, did you hear the big Alexa scandal where it recorded that message and then right. sent that message? Yeah. Like, that is freaking people out now. It's like, oh, blah, blah. Did I ever tell you the story? My dad, my dad's a lawyer. Um, He heard from one of his lawyer buddies that an Alexa was used in a court case recently where it recorded the assault ha- happening and saved it without anyone, like, saying, Alexa, record this. It just it recorded the message. I don't know how it did, but it recorded it. And that Alexa's audio was used in the court of law to convict someone. Right. 
I come home, the Alexa is hogtied on the kitchen table, unplugged from the wall, and my dad refuses to use the Alexa. This happens multiple times. I turn on the Alexa, and so I tell him, Dad, it's not recording you, it's not going to get you sent to, like, nothing's going to happen. Like, no one, it's, I don't know how that happened, it's a fluke accident. Um, a week or two later, I set the Alexa to turn green whenever I get a package delivered, so I know, like, it's at my front door. Yeah. Alexa turns green when I'm at home. I come home. Alexa's hogtied outside on the front porch. Dad's like, it was glowing green. It was recording me. I know it was. Dad, it's not recording you. That's what the functionality of the uh, Alexa is. So, like, I understand the fear of people thinking, like, oh, it's going to record me and listen to me and whatnot. But that's how we learn. Right. And the fact that Siri's not doing it, it's like, okay, good job, Siri, you're not listening to me. But, like, I want Siri to get better. Right. Because Siri, Siri was the first one. Siri should be much further ahead right now than it is. Right. But I think... We'll get in this a little bit. Apple has been stuck in its ways since the passing of um, Steve Jobs, and they've just been like minor tweaks here and there and keeping up with the Joneses rather than right. innovating. If you haven't realized by now, also anyone at home, mute your Alexa devices. Sorry, continue. <laughs> I would hope that you're listening to this through a headset. If you're listening to this on YouTube, then maybe rip. We've triggered a ton of Alexa. Xbox, turn off. Yes. Wait, you think anyone owns a Connect? Well, Microsoft tried to shove, shove, shove them down people's throats. I, I doubt anyone owns a Kinect. More than a paperweight. Yeah. We, anyway. <laughs> we, do you want, uh, yeah, I know we're going, off, we're going off tangent on tangent on tangent. This is a pilot episode. We're just going to get all that right here. What The Kinect. What did you think of that? God, not good. I bought. I got one for Christmas back for the 360. Yeah. Um, I had to buy again. I had the, the slim model. I had to like get the power adapter and get it all plugged in there. I think I played the Connect Adventure game that came with it. I don't remember. I have three purple. I see. I have three purple cases down there. So I have three Connect games. Two are still in the shrink wrap. So I'm assuming that I only played the Connect Adventures game. Yeah, I did. I did have a lot of shrink wrapped uh, Connect games. Um. Yeah. So when you. <laughs> When the Connect was like a first thing, it was a holiday. Um, it was a holiday thing where they released they, it. They treated it like a console release. I remember right. there was like they had like an event in Times Square. Yep. They had like things set up. It was on the Jimmy Fallon show or wherever the show was at the time. Then yep. I remember seeing it everywhere. They they were pushing it as like the next big thing. They yeah, I think we want to wrap all this back into like voice assistance, and I think that's where we're we're talking. Mm-hmm. I think the Connect when it first came out was a once a competitor to we when that happened and they realized that it, they couldn't last with that because it wasn't a direct competitor to we um they tried to make it a thousand different things so you had the microphone and you had like the voice controls of you can play football with it you can do commands that way you can do um different commands from the xbox saying you know xbox turn off Love this app, stuff like that. I think the only two commands I ever used was on Netflix, play next episode, and Xbox off. I think yeah. it's the only two things I ever used. I remember when they first showed off the the when it was back when it was Project Project Natal, and like they showed like two girls video conferencing each other, and one girl was digitally grabbing clothes off a digital rack, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and like it because tr- it was like body tracking her yeah. a little bit. And I'm looking at like even the newer Connect for the Xbox One. They never even got close to that. There was a thing where the kid held up a skateboard, scanned both, like it took a picture of both sides of the skateboard, mm-hmm. and he was able to use that model skateboard in a game. Yeah. That's not even close. No. Um, we're going to talk about Apple's um, latest development conference in a little bit, but like when they did the measure app yeah. where they like, he held, just held it up and he took the dimensions. That's as close to what the Kinect <laughs> promised right. as like, that's years ago never got close to that right so when you have these these companies trying to achieve these futuristic features and they're not ready um i think that's where they really like fall flat so remember when um gamecube was first announced that was supposed to be a 3d platform that's right they wanted luigi's mansion to be in 3d right so they took that they worked with it for how many years we didn't get a nintendo 3ds until 2013 um GameCube was 2002. So I think the, the was future... 2013 the 3DS? No, it had been 2011. That's when I was in college. Oh, uh, 2011? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's upwards of like 10 years to develop still, that technology. Yeah, still, still a long time. But they were working on it for 10 years. Um, Nintendo's one of those companies that's very good at like developing a a idea and then not releasing it until it's done. Yeah. Um, 
And I think that you're, where you talked about where things have changed since the Steve Jobs era of Apple, where you have something like Siri that was released um, with the 4S, um, and it, wow. yeah, the iPhone 4S a That's while ago. That's crazy. Um, and it's gotten to that point where it's, you know, not the best voice assistant, but it's been a, around the longest, um, where you have an idea that's before its time, and then eventually someone does it better, um, which is unfortunate, right? It's like you develop that, and then it it becomes a thing of the past. Um, they're, I think they're working on it. I think they're doing better. But when it comes to development for futuristic technologies, you know the companies that do futuristic technologies well, and they don't release it until it's done well. Look at AirPlay 2. Do, do you know what? Air, so AirPlay 2 is the ability to take two HomePods and have them play left and right audio. That came out a couple weeks ago. The HomePod came out in February. But doesn't Sonos have that technology They've already? All, yeah. Then why did it take so long? long for them to have it come out? So they released something before it was even ready to be done for a time frame for who knows. What a weird time to release it too. Like if they had released it during like November for the holiday, that's like, oh, my buddy likes Apple. I'll get him a HomePod. Like yeah. that's a, it's just expensive enough where it's like, hey, it's an expensive gift, but it's not like... Thousand dollar laptop. It's just at that point they could have made a killing during the holiday. Why February? Did right. they like have it and like oh no one's gonna buy it and just they put it out to pasture? It was delayed. When twice. was it, when was when was the original release? December. Date? December. Yeah. So it was delayed by two months. So when especially for AirPlay two, and then they realized AirPlay two wasn't gonna be out, and then they pushed it back. Um, Steve Jobs would never let that happen. Right. <laughs> it's one of those things where you go back to what would and wouldn't be done. Um, I think, you know, what's funny. I think the entire uh, point of this conversation is back to like that ecosystem where you have um, these companies pushing out these technologies and it's all about like um, what works with what. Um, where I, I used to love Alexa because I used to be able to have her answer text messages and stuff like that. Um, when I had an Android phone when I have an iPhone I can't do that Um, but when you have something like um, a HomePod which you know I have all Apple technology now um, and it can text it can do everything that you know Amazon can't but I'm using Siri and she's behind in the, the technology so there's no perfect ecosystem where you have the perfect mix of everything like I can't use Alexa and have it work with everything if I have Apple Music, it's I have to have Apple Music for it to work seamlessly with HomePod. If I say, hey, Siri, play this song, it'll say trying to pull it from Apple Music. But I don't have Apple Music. I have Spotify. So I have to go into the Spotify app and airplay it to my HomePod where I can't just say, hey, Siri, play the song now. That's a big, like... Yeah. It's weird, too, because they're so close. Like, I think, like, even, like, so... I'm looking at like like apps on my on my iPhone. We should like talk about our tech like backgrounds and current lifestyle too. But um like on like my iPhone, I have like there's the notes app, and the reminders app for making like grocery lists and checklists and stuff like that. The Alexa has a thing where you can say Alexa add eggs to the shopping list, and she'll add that to a list, but it won't be on your main iPhone thing. Right. It'll be in the Alexa app right. on the iPhone. You know what also sucks about that though is that the Alexa app. Is miserable. Oh, it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> it is the most unintuitive app that I've ever seen. For a smart speaker to be able to go into those lists, it takes like four clicks to be able to try and figure out what I, I added into the I look things. at that more as like, like no one's going to use the Alexa app unless they want to see what went wrong. So like, for example, I'll go back and like, I'll check like, what was that thing we said the other day? I can go back and she keeps a, a log of everything you ask her. I can see that being useful, but like in terms of her functionality, there's no functionality there. I think the most I've ever used the Alexa in terms of actually like doing stuff with it. Like I've ordered groceries through her one time back when Amazon Fresh was doing a promotion and I ordered Amazon Music through Alexa. And it's like, hey, just so you know, with that song you can get for this amount and doing a special thing. Like that's once I've ever used her. And it's been great those two times, but the functionality is just not there. And the app, I, I don't want to use an app. Right. I just want things to work. Right. Which is what Apple always says, oh, it just works or this yeah. is cool. And I feel like none of them are doing that properly. Right. Google might be the, the best one, but... 
So when um, we talk about things to just work, Apple's like very, very uh, aware of the ecosystem that they have. So if you buy into Apple products, like you're going to buy all of them if you want. If you have the ambition to, you know, have something track your step in your activity, get an Apple Watch. Apple Watch only works with iPhone, get an iPhone. You want to sync your text message between your iPad and your Mac, you're going to use iMessage. It's all there and it all works seamlessly when it when it works. Yeah. Um, so My just, iCloud recently broke. That's a funny, that's, we should get into that okay. in a second, but well, yeah. I've never even used iCloud. Yeah. Like I've never had, like I know, I know the advantages of it, but I've never used it. Do you so. text from your Mac? Yeah. 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 So you're able to just use your a- Apple ID to be able to text through. I have, yeah, I have my phone set up. So new conversations start from my email and from my, well, it start, new conversations start from my phone number. Yeah. I can reach my phone number and my email and everything forwards back and forth through my computer and right. my phone. So, so I'm a full Apple user. I've been, um, I don't know if I've told you this. I switched to Apple back when I had an old Dell in my old house when I was a kid. And when I caught fire. Oh. Um, dust and the, whatever you want to call it. I don't Neat. know what, what sparked it, but caught fire. I woke up, it's smoking. I put it out right away. Next day, I went out and bought a um, um, iMac. It's over there, taken apart. Not taken apart, but missing chunks. Uh-huh. Bought an iMac. Um, uh, did I have the iPhone? I think I had the iPhone first. I think I, I had the original iPhone. I bought the iPhone the year it came out. Like, I think, like, the month or so, because I had it before school started, high school. Um, had an iMac. Bought the second generation iPad when that came out. It's now paperweight because it's, it's so slow. Um, I own a new iMac that 2013 model. Um, I do not own an Apple Watch. I've thought about it a thousand times, so I can't justify it. Uh, everything I, mean, I I could give you some reasons. No, I know, I know. I know you could. It would work but, with uh, Apple Health, and besides, you know, your Fitbit, not exactly, <laughs> exactly. But like, so I am pretty much what Apple likes in terms of, like, their consumers. I buy most things Apple. I've fallen into the Apple, like, hierarchy. But I admit that I've been waning in what they've been doing the past couple years ever since, again, Steve Jobs passed away. I don't want to say him passing away is the reason why they've been declining. But personally, I feel like it's they're afraid to take major risks. Right. So they'll, they'll, they're fine playing catch up. They're fine doing minor things here and there. They're fine saying, hey, we're now 100% green and it's like, okay, I'm glad you're green. That doesn't make my phone any better right. kind of thing. Um, something that I was talking about you last night is I'm still on iOS 10. God, yeah. Why? Because iOS 11, when they first showed it off, looked pretty good. I, I'll, I'll, like, a lot more customization on the controls, uh, control panel, all that stuff. looked really good. But I heard it was so buggy at first. Like, I'll wait until the, uh, the bugs are worked out. I'll, I'll wait a little bit longer now. I'll wait a little bit longer now. iOS 12 is a thing now, so... Uh, yeah, we'll get, to, we'll get to that a little bit. We'll just wait for that. It, I might just wait to iOS yeah. 12. And that's, I feel weird skipping an entire uh, like OS, because I feel like that's very un-Apple of me, and that's not what they want me doing. And I'm sure there are features and stuff on my phone that are not working right, because I'm not... like there. I know there's some emojis I can't see, because those are iOS 11 only. I know there are some things I'm missing out on, but like at the same time... like. I don't trust iOS 11 to be what I want to be anymore. Where back in the day, I would stay up till midnight, wait, like wherever the time was when the new iOS would come out. I would be there like a kid on Christmas Day waiting to download those iOSs. But now I'm like, is it, is it going to do what I want to do? Like, I'm, I'm almost, I'm, I'm afraid. And it's, right. that's, no, I've never been like that before. But like, I feel like they've hit, they hit a nice groove with their operating system where like if they make it if they try to innovate it in their little way but it doesn't innovate and they make it easier for me but it's actually more of a hassle then i will regret downloading it and that's it's such a dumb thing i'm saying it out loud now it's like you idiot they will they'll, they'll fix it if it's that big of an issue then the entire public wouldn't keep doing it right so it's it's a weird topic because those updates are to fix issues with previous updates yeah and the security patches their feet you know not so much new features they're just literally here but in recent uh articles that you can see um those updates have like bricked certain phones you've seen the audio issues on iphone 7 um where it completely disables the microphone and then i think the only fix for it is to bring it into apple and it's one of those things where that's a huge inconvenience you download an update and now your microphone doesn't work um and yeah I, I, it's one of those things where I, I, they're aware of it and they're working on it but it's it's one of those things where you're on, you're afraid of that you're on iOS 10 because you don't want to have those issues you have a 7 plus yeah yeah so yeah, seven if plus. you downloaded iOS 11 
there's a possibility that your microphone will break. There's no way of knowing if it will or won't. It just, it's a possibility. And uh, I think that when we have, we have to be afraid of like our updates, we start to lose the magic of downloading them. So you're right. We used to wait up until midnight, download the latest update because it was cool and new features. And that's when technology was innovative and new. Whereas we have our iPhone 10s now and we have our big old screens and it's all happy magic land um, in terms of hardware. We're not at that point where there's the huge next innovation of things. Yeah. I think that the full screen experience is great. I think the OLED technology is great. And I think that uh, as long as we have software that's able to run our phones as efficiently as we want them to, it's all up to software now. Like, it's not even the operating system anymore. It's literally about finding the magic in a piece, like an app that you download. It's about finding the people who develop applications that are willing to create something new and innovative and risky because it adds something cool to your phone. But it's very hard to do when you have a closed ecosystem like Apple. Where Google, I love when I can download a new launcher for my phone. I can change up the theme. I could, you know, but it, when it comes down to things like Android, Android hasn't had a successful messaging app ever. I, iMessage is the best thing ever. I remember back when the first iPhone came out, there was a huge, um, back when the BlackBerry was still a thing, like BlackBerry Messenger was like the thing because you can see when someone got your message, when you went back, you had a personal code, special lights on the phone, all like, like that was great. iMessage is the best thing ever. And I knew, like, back when the first iPhone just had the normal text, texting at the time, I knew that, like, iMessaging was a thing that would come to the iPhone. Yeah. So when you have something like iMessage and you have that closed equals system with Apple, um, you can still get Google stuff on there. Yeah. So you can download Google's app. I can use Google Assistant. I have all my Google stuff on my iPhone. Mm-hmm. Um, is that? Do you think there's a point where um, the ecosystem it just turns in on itself? Like, you wouldn't want to do it because it's closed? I think we talked about, like, when I wish I could have Google Assistant on my iPhone, but I can never say, okay, Google, into my iPhone, and it, it will never respond. I'd have to open the app and then say, okay, Google. Um, when you have something like Alexa on uh, an HTC phone, those come baked in now. So if you have an HTC phone, you have Alexa on your phone. So you can say, Alexa, do this from your HTC phone. So that's, like, compatibility and working, but is it really? It's like when you have... Uh, a Sonos, the Sonos One speaker has Alexa built in, mm. but you can't set music alarms. Yeah. So you lose out on features because you're buying into Sonos. You want the speaker, but you're f- sacrificing functionality. I think the issue is going to be every company is trying to do every single thing right now. Every company wants an answer to every solution, which is fine, but I think some companies need to give up certain things. So, like, um, a big thing I've just discovered recently is Apple Maps is garbage. I didn't realize how... Everyone always said it was bad. I didn't realize how bad it was until I downloaded the Google Maps app to my, to my phone. Um, I downloaded it because it was part of the, um, the April Fool's thing where you had Mario Kart for the Google Maps. I've only used Google Maps since then. I've gotten places faster, more efficient. It saves locations better. Like Everything about Google Maps is perfect. Apple Maps... I don't want to use it ever again. I have this fear, though. I always keep my home screen on my iPhone the way that Apple, like, shows it off. I've never moved an app from here. I keep it the way Apple told me to. But, like, look at it now. Like, I should just get rid of Apple Maps and put Google Maps there. I should get rid of the mail and put the Gmail app there. The Gmail app I just got last night. It's amazing. You're going to look at my screen and you're going to see Google Maps gmail (laughs) yeah and honestly that's how it should be now here but here's the thing apple doesn't want you to do that when they say you're not using safari they're like why but it's kind of like the joke with like back with windows and internet explorer internet explorer you use to get chrome yeah that's the one sole use of internet explorer if you're out there right now listening to this podcast and you're using internet explorer leave i don't want your subscription i don't want your follow i want you to leave wow that's harsh like like um again we i i keep saying we're gonna talk about the developer conference but um, they showed off safari during the developer conference yesterday look great look clean i'm not ever gonna use it so let's let's move on to that do you want to get to the developer conference okay what what do you want to start with um so let's talk about I guess the the improvements that they have to the ecosystem okay so when you think about um how we're always in terms of this conversation we're talking about how 
we get frustrated with ecosystems not playing well with each other. When you buy into an ecosystem, it has its faults and you want to improve it with someone else's ecosystem, but it never works well. So like you have Apple uh, products, you have Apple Maps, but Google Maps is great, um, but it doesn't work on CarPlay, right? Now it does, it just recently, but CarPlay as of two weeks ago did not work with Google Maps. Mm -hmm. So CarPlay did not support any like third-party navigation. You had to use Apple Maps. So you have that ecosystem where it's, you you buy into it and you use it, um, but every ecosystem has its faults. Um, whereas Google, Google Maps is great, but at the risk of privacy. I have had Google Maps track my location since 2012. I can go back to a certain day, anytime back to 2012, and tell you exactly where I went and what I did that day. And that that that's out there. That's in my account. That's so many strip clubs, though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, don't give away my secrets. Um, whereas, you know, Siri doesn't listen to you or track your um, your voice data. But I think that... At the fault of yeah. poor products. Yeah, but is that a poor product or is that the consumer not understanding the technology or knowing what they want. Because now, back going to the Alexa thing, people are freaked out that Alexa's listening and recording the conversation. But we have them. But we have them. <laughs> Siri, uh, people, the average consumer groups all these things together. Everyone probably doesn't know that Siri doesn't save your recordings. It listens on a server basis. They probably don't know that. Me? I don't care if they listen to me. I, I'm broadcasting myself right now to the internet. I don't care. But people do care. The gen- I think the general con- uh, can... Uh, what's the word? Consensus. Consensus, thank you. The general consensus is people do not want these devices listening. They don't want them tracking. They don't want the government involved, blah, blah. Apple has st- stood up to the government when it comes to, like, no, you can't have this information. That's our agreement with the user. That's great. People can't be afraid to let these things grow and develop that way. Right. So why are they? Yeah, that's a hard one. Let's let's jump into uh, WWDC, and I'll I'll let you I'll answer that question. Okay. Um, so, should we start off the way they went? They they showed off the um, well, the first they showed that. Did you see the, that developer? Oh, the documentary. De- the developers. Yeah, on, yeah, it was great. It was they, honestly they, they feast on the uh, the provisions. The weak ones get left behind. I think that they have such a development team in terms of the people that they hire to create those visionaries. Like that was perfectly done. Um, I think their intros to WWDC the last year, the one with the app pop app Ocalypse. Did you see yes, that one? Yes, I did. So all their apps disappeared, and it was a, a black market of taking pictures, like Snapchat, mm-hmm. and it was hilarious. Their their commercials have been on point lately. There are any sort of like Apple's always been on. I can't think of a time Apple has not been on point with their marketing. Yeah, it's been great. It's always been great. Um. Yeah, when they, I think when they jumped into things, um, we knew that we were going to get iOS 12. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I, did they start with iOS 12? Or yep, what? They, they went right into iOS 12. Um, so a, fun, there, a lot of what they talk about on stage isn't even the full list of everything that's in their, their update. It's, it's the buzzwords, the keywords that they right. need, like the average consumer to hear about and start questioning about and want to know about. Right. So one thing um, that is in iOS 12 that isn't mentioned at all is that... Before we go too deep, do you want to mention to the audience what your position with Apple is before so it doesn't sound biased or doesn't get you in trouble at all? No. No? Nope. Okay. I own Apple products and that's about it. Fair enough. Neat. So (laughs) um, when they announced iOS 12, um, something that they talked about, again, with uh, privacy in terms of being able to... um, uh, get more information out to the, the standard user is in iOS 11.4 they have like little data cards this is data and privacy and you can click in and anybody has that you can look and see what your data is being used for mm-hmm. where it goes and why why they track these things um, where they have now if a iPhone has not been unlocked in a week it disables all um, data transfer over USB Wow. So if you have a iPhone that was in the hands of a serial killer mm-hmm. and you don't know the passcode, mm-hmm. but that phone's been sitting in... Wait, my, at, my iPhone is in the hands of a serial killer, but I don't know the password to my phone? 
Or the serial killer doesn't know the password to my phone. No, it's the serial killer's iPhone. Okay, and I have his iPhone. Yes, because you're the de- detective. Okay. But you're you're two weeks into this case. Okay. That phone has been sitting in a bush because he threw it out the window. So I don't have the phone. No, you retrieved the phone. <laughs> But it's in the bush. Yeah, you went and got it. Okay, I found I found it I, I found it in the bush two weeks later. Yeah. Okay. And you hire a third party because Apple won't unlock that phone. Yeah, no, they won't. Um you hire a third party place to, you know, unlock that phone for you. They plug it in, there's nothing you can do. It disables all data transfer after a week of being locked. So I'm the serial killer. I return to the scene of the crime, find my phone, am I is everything gone? Am I fucked? <laughs> no this is this is basically saying like the serial killer is still at large yes you have his phone yes you want to get into the the data of his phone to be able to figure out who this person is yes you can't because the data is locked on that phone and you cannot get it over no, usb I, I get that but okay. I'm, I'm the serial killer oh, you want your phone back oh my phone back <laughs> Is my data still locked? Or as soon as I go pick up my phone, put my passcode in, am I, is my data there again? It's there. It's on the oh, phone. Okay. It just... Uh, <laughs> the way you're describing it sounded like in two weeks, if you do not like show like any activity, the phone deletes itself. That's what I was thinking you were saying. Like, that's a horrible idea. <laughs> Serial killers aside, that has nothing to do with the actual product, but... <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> all right. Your first mistake is returning to the scene of the crime. They always return to the scene <laughs> of the crime. Oh, my God. Okay. You're the detective. You have the phone. The serial killer's still at large. You plug in the phone with a third-party company that you're paying thousands of thousands of dollars to unlock this phone, but it's two weeks out. The phone hasn't been unlocked in over a week. There's no way to get the data off of it. Awesome. And that's Apple's promise to be able to protect its users from third-party places working with like the fbi and this is all for the sake of consumer privacy has there been an issue where third parties have been able to hack into the iphone at this point because i remember there was that big stink a year or so ago where they want they went to apple and said hey let us in and apple said no like this sounds like even more security but was there a problem with the old security uh so i think i from what I understand, there is a third party uh, company that does unlock or get data off of iPhones. What they do to do it, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, but when you have something that that's that's against Apple's pr- like privacy laws, it like it abides by. Yeah. So if you buy an iPhone, you want to make sure everything is safe, no matter what situation that is. It was the issue with the the Boston uh, Marathon bomber. Mm-hmm. They got his phone and they went to Apple and said, I want a, a backdoor. And Apple said, no. Um, your information is essentially at that point with iOS 12, from my understanding, locked. Like you're you're at that point where. Which is what you want, honestly. Like, yeah, I can't think of a reason why I would not I can't, want that. I can't think of a serial killer who would want their iPhone data in the hands of the police, right? Isn't that a weird gray area? Maybe Manson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but that, that, it makes perfect sense because, again, it is a weird gray area because I'm like, okay, if someone does something wrong, I want every, like, I want every person out there in the world to, like, let's get him. Let's figure out what's going on. Uh, yeah, I, 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 don't, I know. I, I really can't pick. I, I want to say, like, pick a side or not. Yeah. Like, if someone, like, bombed Apple's new building, that Infinite Loop, and, like, they had the guy, and, like, we need to check his phone, though. The only evidence is on his phone. Would Apple unlock it? Probably not. That, yeah, that's a, that's a very Well, great... same thing with, um, a couple of weeks ago, the person who shot, uh, took a gun into YouTube's headquarters. That's right, yeah. So, it's, like, one of those things where I, these events are especially when it comes to technology we we think that there is a a back door there isn't there there's no way that there's a technology out there that can you know whereas google uh more liberal with like again you can see my data history all the way back to you know you'll probably need like a, a warrant or something to be able to try and get it but still at that point it's like 
I'm okay with it. I know I do nothing wrong, so all my data I like to have. Um, I think it's cool to be able to track what I did a year ago and yeah. three months, 12 days, and I can get I was at this place at this time. I think it's scary, though, when, when Apple says, like, no one can get your data. Like, that's, like, it's a good thing. But people don't like the idea of technology overpowering us. And that sounds a little Terminator kind of thing. But when they're saying there's nobody to get that data, and it's because they're putting their foot down, or now with this new technology, no. Like, it's not even us putting our foot down. We've built the technology the way to lock it up, like, lock and key. Yeah. Like, that's a very dangerous... Like, it, it's good, but it's a dangerous precedent going forward, I think. Where we want security. Security is, like, the number one, like, thing everyone in America wants right now. That and whatever the new f- fidget spinner is. But <laughs> I bought um, a fidget spinner the other day. Really? Yeah, Toys R Us closing sale. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. Oh, it's that's a dollar. Sad. That's sad. Um, that's, what the, that's what they should have been to begin with. But, um... <laughs> When, secu- when when technology starts becoming not more than... Sentient. Sentient. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not the word, though, because this is technology acting the way it was developed, but, like, to a cop trying to do his job, right. that's evil technology. To a person, um, who like, average Joe, like you or me, who lost our iPhones, that's a godsend. The serial killer, he's like... <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, it's good, but it's a horrible thing. So there's yeah. so many gray areas. I almost feel like Apple should allow you, like, do you want Apple to protect you? Yes or no? If you do, you'll get all these features and we will not give you information at all. Right. But then, it, like, who wouldn't check yes on that box? And then, yeah. I, I don't know. That's a, I'm happy to hear about it, but, like, it's such a weird gray area that I think that you and me will never be personally affected by it. Right. It's going to... If there are more incidents like the ones we mentioned previously, if there are more incidents like that, I think it'll become a bigger topic of conversation. Right. But I think the examples were that the unlocking of the iPhone has been the linchpin to a case or catching someone has not been big enough yet where that's going to become an issue. But I think that it sets a dangerous precedent for the future. Right. Um, what's funny about that is we, we're, we rely on our technology so much to that point where it's like I have all that data. And I know who has it. Yeah. So I know Google has my location data. I know Apple has it. Um, I know Apple doesn't do anything with it. Um, Apple doesn't even recommend, like, it recommends, like, what time I should leave based on traffic. Google does the same thing. But I know Google can sell that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that where we have all our information out there, it's I'm fine with it because I don't do anything. Like, who's if I ever became a celebrity, I probably have to turn that off. Um, but... We rely on our technology so much to the point where we we wanted to have these features um, I, I, and be used for you know our personal help, but um, you don't think at the the other end who it's who it's affecting. Is it bad that I want them to have all my data? No, honestly, like, like it, if if giving them all my data makes my life easier, if they like, oh Ken, you buy Amiibo. Well, the Amazon app, Alexa, is telling me, hey Ken, all the Mebos that were twelve dollars years ago, they're now a dollar. Buy them now. Yes, tell me that. If there's a quicker way to work, tell me that. If there's like, oh, you're driving to work and there's a Starbucks over here having a sale, tell me that. If I can get like a music list on like on Pandora or something, or not Pandora. Oh my god, um, <laughs> Who Spotify. Uses Pandora. I don't, my dad. Um, if I can get Spotify to make the perfect play, like make me a perfect playlist of songs I know I will love based on what I've told you before in the past, and every song is perfect. I want that. Right. I can't think of when I can't think of more data giving me a less experience. You know what I'd really love if I could opt in to send Apple my Siri data. Yeah, I would to do to improve Siri. I'd do it. I'd do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, like if you want to record uh, me talking to Siri and asking dumb questions, sure. If it makes Siri better, yeah, absolutely, I'll do it. We should use that. Um, so besides the privacy stuff in, in yeah. iOS 12, Siri shortcuts, which yeah. is something they put up. It's going to be on every Apple device. That's the thing. When they show off an OS for like the Apple Watch or the uh, Apple uh, the iPhone, it's going to carry over pretty much every, all the new software. What would you think of the sh- Siri shortcuts? Um, so I think that it's a, a really weird take on if this, then that. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that it's it, – there are – not excuse, but their solution to um, if this Siri doesn't do it, you can make it do it. Um, again, it's up to third party developers to be able to include their available shortcuts in their apps. Um, but in terms of being able to say, hey, find my keys. Cool. Awesome. Like, I, I'd love that. 
you know, I think that being able to work with more third party apps and opening up the ecosystem is what we need. Um, if we don't do that, you know, we're, we're at a point where Siri is just going to fall apart. Um, and at that point, again, we just said it came in third. Um, and I want it to be number one because I use it. <laughs> you know? Um, the, I think the other announcements of things that where Siri is able to, um, those, those shortcuts being a, a customizable thing. Great. Like I'd love to have weird sci-fi references to be able to you know find my keys like if i want to tell siri uh earl gray tea and it heats up my ember mug awesome like i love that is that a a thing that you can do have you heard of ember mug no i haven't it's a mug that has a thermal plate in it that is bluetooth to my phone so i put it on a charging mat Uh and then when i pour my you know earl gray tea Pour it in the cup. It's like eight, eight ounce cup mug. Um, it will bring it to a constant temperature for about two hours. I don't know how long it takes you to drink tea. Me, I, you know, I put I, it down, forget about it. An hour later, I go back. It's still at 135 degrees. I need to get that for my dad for Father's Day. It's, it's at Starbucks. I think it's like 80 bucks. It's expensive, but it's so good. That's so worth it, yeah. honestly. Um, I thought you were going to say more than $80. <laughs> There, yeah, so like if I could say Earl Grey tea and then it brings my ember mug to the temperature of tea that I like, maybe 100 degrees, awesome. Like, do that. Like, I love it. Um, we need more integration with third party apps. And I think that opening up Siri more, cool. Get third parties in on it, take my voice data, do some AI crap with it, make it cool again. Like, I'd love it. it that's where we need to go. Mm. I think it's 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 um, imperative for people to start embracing the smart home technology. Right. Like nothing in my house, unfortunately, right now is really smart home. Like I have no Wemo switches. I have no lights that react or anything like that. But when in the um, the demo, when she says going home, it started playing her music, turned on her nest, started doing all these things for her. I'm like, that's the dream. Like if I could have that all that like in the winter time. Like if I get up in the morning, Siri, start my morning get the amber mug going, turn the car, the remote star on the car, get like certain things going. Like that's fantastic. And I think that if people start embracing the smart home technology, they'll embrace the series shortcuts more and more because some of the, the shortcuts they showed are like, I can't see myself ever needing that, like ordering the coffee and just say, Hey, how about that coffee? Like that seemed like a nothing thing to me. It's only when she had multiple things going at once and they were all like in a line that made sense. Again, it's the whole if then, then that thing, Absolutely. But that to me had so much more vision than the day to day, just like average thing here and there. Well, currently Siri only works with, uh, we're on an Apple binge because WWDC, we could talk about every, you know, application out there that works with different apps. Yeah. But Siri works with HomeKit. Apple developed that. Yeah. So HomePod, you know, Hue lights, uh, only recently the LifeX lights. Um, the nano leaf light, like all yeah, those things. Yeah, I have nothing like that. All right home, like HomeKit enabled stuff works with Siri. Opening that up and being able to say, um, "Take me home," planning your route, turning on your lights, maybe starting a teapot or something like that. Apple doesn't make a teapot that's HomeKit enabled yet. Yet, maybe Apple Just Tea. A, Apple Tea. You're right. How could we mm. forget about Apple Tea? Sounds like a snap. apple apple cinnamon tea. Ooh, so... ooh. You know, that was should... the uh, podcast, <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. We're gonna go get some pizza and tea now. Bye. Um, yeah, I, it, when you have something that is so deep into that ecosystem, and you're opening it up, of course people are gonna like it. The tile app isn't has nothing to do with. I don't like Apple even sells tiles, but it's uh, maybe they do. I think on their website they do. But it's one of those things. It's not HomeKit enabled, but it it'll work with iOS twelve. You keep saying HomeKit. I know what that is. Do you think the average consumer knows HomeKit? No. No, right? No. Do they think they know it? Like, because when you download the new software, there's a big old Home button, right? Yeah. Home button. <laughs> there is a Home icon on yeah. your screen. Do you think anyone knows what that is? I don't think. You click on it, and it's like. Yeah, it's empty. It's empty. And then they're like, what is this? And then people realize you got to buy things to get it working. And it's like, well, I don't want that. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, I have an Alexa. I'm fine. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, when, where are you going to use this stuff? Um, if you didn't go to an Apple store and someone tried to sell you on it. Um, Which I, do you blame Apple for that? Or do you blame just the current 
technology ecosystem that we haven't got it out there enough. I blame the um, the cost associated with a smart home. Mm. So each light bulb's forty dollars, right? It's it's too much. How long does it last though compared to the average light bulb? Ten years, maybe longer. I, I start. With, they have, they have, I think I don't. Know, I don't know what you start with. Start with the fact that it's a smart light bulb, or that it's ten years. Yeah. Because we buy light bulbs here for like a couple of dollars. They last. Yeah month or two three months i don't even well know. if you have an led light that's you know maybe you spent twelve dollars on that that's gonna last you 10 years it's one of those things where led lights last longer um and i think that where you you have all these integrated systems like if you don't want to spend a ton of money on lights buy a smart switch yeah but nobody has the the information readily available to them best buy is okay they started doing like a, a vivant thing where they have someone come in, they say, oh, you could do this, this, and this, and then they do it for you, and they give you, like, a set amount. They're, like, contract smart homes. Um, So when you have a smart doorbell and a smart, you know, lamp, uh, you'll be able to use all of them from an app. Um, I think the the cost associated with that is currently too high to be able to do. That's why everyone likes the uh, Echo Dot. It's 50 bucks, not it's $40 now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So it's 40 cheap. bucks, you're going to have a voice assistant that can play music for you. Um, and that's all through a subscription of, you know, $100, soon to be $120, which is or ridiculous. I think already is. Ridiculous. Do you, you think uh, that's a whole other topic for another show, but do you really think it's that ridiculous? Yes. 20, 20 more bucks? Yes. I bought a video game, saved $20 on it right away. It paid for itself. No. Well, Maybe. not everyone buys video games. That's the thing. Like, there are perks. I don't use Amazon Music. I don't, I could care less. Okay, but you you're so we're, we're off track for a minute. <laughs> Do you think it's ridiculous for the general public, or is it ridiculous for you? Because I saw that like twenty bucks. You know what? I buy so much shit from Amazon. Twenty bucks is not going to phase me. Yeah. To the average person, like my brother who maybe uses Amazon once a year, he has Prime, but he uses maybe like buys one thing a year. Twenty bucks for not getting much out of it, definitely an issue. But to you, do you think do you think twenty dollars is an issue for you, Brian, in your day to day life? Yeah, it totally. Is. Because really? when okay. I I use Amazon in the way that I play guitars, right? I pick up a guitar maybe once a month, and I, I'll play for a little bit and I'll put it down. Amazon is great when you need it, not when you want it. So when I need to find something to watch, I'll scroll through. Uh, Netflix, Hulu, and then Amazon. If I want to play music through my Sonos, which is Alexa-based, I'm going to play it through Spotify, iHeartRadio, and then Amazon Music. It's like, I don't care about all the stuff that's loaded in. If I could have a... Oh, God, this is a fantastic idea. If we had a modular subscription for Amazon... I would check off music, I would check off books, <laughs> I would check off pretty much anything that I did not use. And if that brought down the price to a point where I was okay with buying it, cool. But half the stuff I don't use. So you're making me pay $20 more for stuff that I don't use because maybe I have it somewhere else in the ecosystem. I think that's where you and me are a little bit different because I think I use every single thing that Amazon offers mm. at this point. Like... I, I if there's not a package to my door at least once a week, then something's wrong. I use Amazon that much for pretty much everything. I have the Amazon credit card, so I get so many rewards points, and it, it basically pays for itself half right. the time. Um, I use the the video streaming service. There's some shows only on Amazon. Like I watched the entire season of a uh, Made in Abyss that was an Amazon exclusive. Watch all that through Amazon. I use the music on the Alexas all at the house that we have here. Um, I use the Twitch Prime, the Amazon Prime video thing. A video game thing. Um, I used Amazon Fresh when it came out. They stopped delivering to my house because yeah. you Amazon. <laughs> I used Amazon Fresh. I've downloaded the ebooks. I did the uh, the Amazon uh, Audible uh, ebook thing, for, uh, the audiobook for a while thing too. I think I've used every single aspect of Amazon. So maybe Amazon for business. Maybe I think I've used it all. Yeah. So I really like when the twenty bucks they announced like. That makes sense. They've given me, they added, they've added more things since I started be, being an Amazon Prime user that the 20 bucks didn't phase me. But to you, I see your point. 
Yeah. Definitely. I think a modular way of doing it would be genius. Yeah. How much they would charge for each and would they separate? Like, well, you're not really getting a value, like a $20 value of Twitch Prime. Would they all be $20? Yeah. Because, like, Twitch Prime gives you a couple extra things and a $5 free sub a month. Yeah. So would you charge, what, 10 bucks for that? Like, that... That's, that seems a little too low. Like, yeah. like I, can't, I can't imagine what they would charge for each one. Yeah. I think the more expensive side of things is the Amazon. Uh, what's our time at, by the way? Almost an hour. Okay, cool. Yep. I think the the Amazon, like, video, cool. Like, I'd pay for that. I don't, if you wanted to do it like a tiered system, like Amazon video is going to cost you $40. Um, cool. For, I, $40? 40, well, you'd have to buy, like, the... The year. You'd have to have, like, three things. You know what I mean? Like, you'd have to have... Month to month, six months, a year kind of thing? No, or? like, if... So, Amazon... Like, how much do you pay for Netflix? Like, Netflix is... Netflix bucks, is 10 bucks. 10, 10 bucks a month? Would you charge... So, then, Amazon Video... You think Amazon has more or less content... Not content, but value than Netflix. I personally think Netflix has more value, but Amazon would not charge less than $10 for Amazon Video. Right. Well, here's the thing. So if you have, you need to have an Amazon Prime subscription yearly like for, well, they have monthly too. Monthly is more expensive though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like $10 more. I, the big thing is one year is $120. Anyway. Yeah. So that's 10 bucks a month. So if you stack up each feature based on like a amount, so we'll go, to, we'll pretend it's still $100 just for ease of math. Um, well, ease of math, one year, 120, it's 10 bucks a month. That's pretty... Okay, so but let's let's <laughs> redo, it easier for us. Let's redo for 20 bucks. redo uh, Amazon subscription. So it's a hundred dollars for the year. Uh, that hundred dollars is forty dollars towards Amazon uh, Video. Okay. Yeah, I just making up numbers here. That's a lot. Like, okay, <laughs> wait, don't argue with it. <laughs> We're literally pretending <laughs> to create or fix Amazon's problems here. Fuck it. <laughs> when, so, all right, $40 for just the two-day shipping. That'll cover your, okay, Kenny likes that one better. <laughs> As I so, nod into the yeah, microphone. So, so it's $40 for two-day shipping and access to Amazon's offers, like weekly deals. It's $20 for Amazon video. We're at $60. Okay. It's Twenty dollars for Amazon Music, and then twenty dollars for a Twitch Prime account. Yeah. yeah. So now you have a hundred dollars for the year. There's a lot more that's included in Amazon besides the things I just listed, yes. like Fresh, um, stuff like that. But if I was able to customize the amount and be like, I want to only pay Amazon for the base of two day shipping. I want to pay forty dollars for the year just for two day shipping for the entire year. I don't want music. I don't want video. I don't want, I don't want any of that. I just want the two day shipping $40 a year. Cool. I do that. Yep. Um, if I want to do, uh, the two day shipping plus Amazon video, $60, I do that because I don't use the other features. Give me a modular system where I can pay for the things that I want and then reject the things that I don't use and then save me money and then keep me a happy customer to bring this back to the apple um stuff um i think that goes just technology in general when they force things upon you that they they think like, oh you definitely need this or you definitely want this that's where we get issues so i said before like my i'm afraid to do ios 11 because they add all these extra things that they think i want but i don't need or do not want right that's the thing so i think your idea for amazon that's a great idea but I think they're trying to say, like, if that way, too complicated for the average consumer. Let's give them an amazing product. One amazing product at one amazing price creates so much value that if they don't see the value of 120 they won't buy it. But if they do see the value, they know how good of a deal they're getting, and they'll want it. I don't want it. <laughs> then don't get it. I, I don't think I will. Yeah, then don't. Because honestly, like, in, in my house right now, I have an Amazon Prime. My dad has an Amazon Prime. My brother has it. There's three Amazon Prime accounts in this house. God, you know you can family share that, right? Here's the thing. My stepsister, my dad's girlfriend, uh, stepbrother, all of them, they use my Amazon account, the family sharing thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. But for some reason, we also have separate accounts. Primes. Because why not, I guess. I don't, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know why. <laughs> but like at the same time, I think it, it works well that way because if I move out, if I move out, they lose all that right. until I until I change addresses. Like so, like something like that can happen. But like it, it, it's got our like their teeth in into us. I think it's, I, the only gripe I have is stop raising the price. At Netflix, this is the is first the, time ever they've raised the price. It used to be eighty if you were a student. Hmm. 
Then it went to fifty, and I like that. <laughs> I liked it when it was fifty dollars, and I was a student and yep. I had poor life. Anyway, um, so we have like you were talking about things that you don't use. iCloud. That's one that you don't use, Correct. right? Um, but you so you don't back up your phone ever, right? I guess so. You'll plug it into your computer. My my biggest issue with I think my iPhone in general, since, since the original iPhone, was I've always been afraid of losing data on my phone by plugging into something. It's like, hey, we're going to back up something for you, and it's going to erase, or it's going to like, oh, we're going to sync all your contacts to Facebook. So all the icons change to Facebook icons, and we add numbers that you don't even, you shouldn't even have. Like, I've always been terrified of that. Um, the iCloud, where it's like, oh, we have five gigs of storage. Like, that's iCloud storage that's not iCloud backup I know that difference now um, but there's just been so many things about it where I've never had a problem with the manual sync it's never caused me any issues I have not lost anything I'm terrified if I make a big change like that something's going to happen and I'm like why did I do it that way I know you can make a backup of your phone normally try the iCloud if something fucks up just use that backup and go back to the way it was yeah. I could do that but for some reason I don't I don't know why so you've never backed up your phone I plug it into my iMac maybe once a month. Do you press backup or yes. you just let it set? Okay, so you back up your phone to your computer like once a month. Okay, so that's fine. Um, but you don't use iCloud for like photos or... Um, I have the photo stream built yeah, in. That's so that's about it. Yeah. You don't upload your photos to iCloud at all? Mm-hmm. No. Um, yeah, so I think that whereas like it's, iCloud is something that I use and rely on, um, it sucks because it, it recently broke, and I'll tell you that story in a second. It? But it's um, when you have something that you pay for, you want it to work, and you want it to be uh, something that you uh, are able to customize um, because you use certain features and what you don't. iCloud is great because it's free; you can use it, use it or not. Um, and I think in your situation, it's great. Imagine if you had to pay ninety nine cents for that iCloud storage and you didn't use it. I would hate it. That's me and Amazon. So I have all these features and I don't use them and I hate it. So there there it goes. You know what I mean? Um, whereas I pay for iCloud and I expect that to work like seamlessly and I use everything. When something breaks, I know it's broken. I had an issue with my iCloud recently where all of my iCloud files, iCloud drive files, inaccessible. So think about for someone who um, essentially uses their device to um, for business and they have like PDFs that they need on iCloud Drive and they use it from their phone. It's a personal iCloud account uh, and they can't access that. Um, I've had that in the past couple of days where I was in able to access any of my iCloud Drive files. Um, and I think that we rely on these things so much that when we pay for them, we get angry. <laughs> You know, I was like, why am I paying this much? And it stopped working. This is the first time I've ever had an issue. But I've had that issue in the past where I paid for something and it doesn't work. And that's the general consumer consensus. It's either you're paying too much for things that you don't use. You're paying for something, something breaks and you get angry. Or everything works seamlessly and you're a happy consumer. It, it takes a lot to get me angry. Like I know there are things, like things I'm paying for right now that I do not use. Um... We're doing a pod. I'll talk to you probably you this after we're done recording. But uh, in terms of getting a podcast up on iTunes, I've been trying for years to find the perfect way of getting like multiple podcasts up onto iTunes. Uh, I eventually start hosting the JK podcast on SoundCloud. I pay like fifteen bucks a month to keep it up on SoundCloud. I still have not got it the way I want yet to like, get it up on iTunes or have a way to do multiple shows without them all ending up in the same feed. So I keep paying that fifteen dollars. Maybe it's like eleven or twelve dollars. I keep paying that monthly SoundCloud fee. For something that I have not updated or touched now in probably a year or two. But, like, I just... Just keep paying it. I just keep paying it. I don't know. And so much money wasted. Yeah. That's like, um... I have two uh, Spotify subscriptions. Why? (laughs) Okay. Um, One of them is a family plan that's $15 a month. So, me and my girlfriend are able to use... Her uh, on her Echo or Sonos Echo. Me on my Sonos Echo. I also own a HomePod. Um, So, yeah, that's a conundrum. Um, But I also have a student Spotify account. Okay. I Um, had that. How much is that? $5. Good deal. Yeah. 
But the only reason I have a student Spotify is because Hulu is included with that. Uh, that's so you're paying five bucks a month for Hulu. Yeah, I'm paying five bucks a month for Hulu, you and see, I have an extra. Yeah, that's different though. The way like you should have spun that like I found a way to pay five dollars a month for Hulu. Okay, all right. I found five. I don't months. count that as a second spot because I'm doing nothing with that SoundCloud account. Yeah, it's whole, hosting the first thirty episodes of my of my podcast up there. Never made to iTunes. It's just it's holding those files right now. I've done nothing with that because I know it's not the solution that I need, but I just didn't want to get rid of it. Right. You're getting Hulu. Okay, that's fair. something. All right, I guess that's better. I literally used my sister's uh, uh, student information to be able to get it, but it's fine. Is what it is. Is what it is. <laughs> All right. We have drifted far from the, the the developer thing. Yeah, we have, and we've been going for about an hour now. So cool. Top things from the the conference you took away. What what were you most excited for? Dark mode. Dark mode. Dark mode. <laughs> uh, dark mode looks amazing. Uh, yeah. I think everything needs dark mode. Uh, everything on my phone, I switched to dark mode whenever I could. So when they said, like, again, it's such a minor thing, but it's like, I'm happy it's there. Yeah, for those who don't know, Mac got dark mode. It's dope. What's the new name of the new Mac OS? Mojave. Uh, I want them to start changing the names. Like, enough with the iOS 12. Give me, like, iOS Jelly Bean. Oh God, no! I love the Android. Worst the, thing. You do you Kit love the six percent adoption rate too? <laughs> <laughs> they show that every year, and it's 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 tr- it's, it's sad because it's true, but yeah. it's just it's so funny. It's never not funny. Yeah. So there you are. But at the same time, again, uh, we keep going to tangents. Like with those type of phones, yeah. I can see why there's such a disparity because some phones came close that were Apple. How far back does this new software go to? Like. Back like six years, four, yeah, two, six years. Yeah, that was 2014. 2013 with the 5s. Wow. So they the software can go on phones that are six years old. That's incredible. And that's Apple's devotion to be able to, you know. And they put you, you know they put such an emphasis on like power and whatnot. How the new operating systems will like. They won't throttle your phone. They they really optimize the performance because yeah. there was that whole big stink a couple months ago. We're like, oh yeah, we throttle we uh yeah. the new the new uh, software always makes your phone run slower. Don't how'd you not know that? It's the batteries. The batteries, yeah. Yeah. So just replace your battery, you'll be fine. Yeah. Just walk into an Apple, say I need a battery. Wait three hours for your appointment. <laughs> it's gotten better. <laughs> it's gotten better. Um. Yeah. So dark mode's cool. I love the uh, progressive. Um, Pro- the progressive uh, screensaver. Yes. There you go, progressive. Is that, I guess, yeah, it makes it sound like it's like an equality yeah. uh, thing. But uh, like they show the sand dunes in the morning, yeah. then as time Overnight. progresses. I just want to know, like, can you make custom ones for that? Like, can I like can, can I leave my camera outside all day and capture the oh, harbor? Like a time lapse. Yeah, yeah, and then like dope. sync that up to the uh, thing there. Like, how many options are they going to have? Because they showed the sand dunes. I think they showed one, one other one. Maybe I don't remember. I only remember the sand dune. They yeah, show. I think I only remember the sand dune. Um, which that's cool. Again, such a little thing. Um, they showed the for the again we're still on the Mac OS. They showed the dashboard cleanup where everything got yeah. sorted to a pile. From someone who screen caps everything from like Final Cut Pro, when I'm doing thumbnails. That's a godsend for me. I don't think how useful that is for anyone else. Um, I like the walkie-talkie mode on the Apple Watch. That was actually originally announced with the first Apple Watch, and then it never came out. Really? Yeah. And now it's here again. Which is interesting. Maybe mm. the cellular thing was the thing that they needed. Probably. Maybe Wi-Fi quality wasn't great enough to be able to do phone calls on the original Apple Watch, but it's here. It's back. Yeah. They took away the Hey Siri thing. Now you just hold your watch up to your mouth. It knows that you're talking to your watch. Mm. We'll see how much I use that. Um, it, it's a little more convenient because, like, again, like when you're, ho- you're going like this or you're holding up to your mouth... It's obvious what you're doing. Right. So uh, the fact they took away the Siri part, it's like, okay, cool. It's yeah. A minor little thing. You're calling Maxwell Smart. That's what you do, right? Is that the name of your watch? Ma- no. Maxwell Smart. Get Smart? Oh, der. Yes. <laughs> Steve Carell. Yes. No. The, uh, the, ori- the original. Oh the, I know the original show. I We're was... so young. <laughs> I'm younger than you. <laughs> How old are you again? 24. Oh, my God. You're so young. Yeah. Look at me go. I'll be 26 in October. Yeah. Can't even work an iPhone anymore. Can't even what? Work an iPhone anymore. Oh, God. Well, 
They have classes. We have so many. Like, if we talked about Apple alone, just what they're doing has that's its own podcast in general. Yeah, the, we we should probably say it right now. Like, uh, this podcast has been all over the board. This is literally our pilot episode. I'm gonna call we, it. I'm so, gonna, go ahead. We didn't even plan this, so we're just literally talking about whatever pops into mind. Obviously, our new podcast will have some sort of like topic structure and then time limits about what we'll be Absolutely, doing. Absolutely, yeah. The um, fact that we've been going for over an hour as it is, I'm surprised we. I thought it was going to be like 20 minutes and we've gone for an hour. To be now. completely fair, this was literally just to test the microphones. Yeah. Which are pretty dope. Yeah, this is a brand new setup. Bought through Amazon Prime, by the way. Uh huh. Two day shipping. Uh huh. Anyway. Anyway, any other things from the developer conference before we wrap things up for the, for the, our first pilot episode? No, I think I'm good. I, AR is going to be huge. They're working on it. I don't care about AR. Okay. Uh, kids will love it. I, the Lego thing was dope. Lego thing was dope. Lego thing was very, very dope. It, it seems like it's almost the evolution of Toys to Life. Yeah. Like, imagine having, like, an amiibo on right. the counter, and then, like, Mario would go, jumps off the amiibo statues or right. walking around. Um, that's great, but, like, they sh- they've shown off AR now a couple times at the conferences. Yeah. And I just haven't seen anything from it yet. Yeah, me either. They keep, so. saying, they keep saying it's this big thing. We're learning. It's getting better. The technology's getting better. Hmm. What's the what what's what's the use for me? Kids are gonna love it. Yeah. yeah. What's my use? It's almost as if they're developing the technology so they can release a final finished product instead of rushing it out to market unfinished. But isn't the fact that it's already out in the hands considered unfinished? I think they're doing better than they did with Siri. Anyway, this has been the podcast. <laughs> yes, this has been the TechMate podcast. This is our pilot episode, episode zero. Is it's going to be blah as it's going to be called? Um, like Brian said, in the future we will have more um, structured uh, podcasts. Probably like three topics, twenty minutes each, something like that. You know. But uh, yeah, let us know what you think. Let us know how the audio quality is. Because again, this was really just to test the audio quality and see if we could banter with each other for an hour, which I think we had a pretty good. Con- yeah. We got pretty deep in some of these conversations. We haven't seen each other in a while, too. So, like, we haven't had, like, a decent conversation in a while. That's true. So, a lot of stuff goes on in terms of, like, technology. So, this podcast will happen once a year. And by then, <laughs> we should aim to do this, like, at least once a month. I agree. Yeah. Because. I feel like I'll be able to find time. I would like to do work. like a like a post E three show with you, like maybe like oh yeah, a couple of weeks after E three is over, because I doubt we're gonna see any new tech there because Xbox One X just came out, PS4 Pro just came out, Switch is killing it. Yes, man. I don't think we're gonna see anything mind blowing in terms of technology. Yeah, but you never know. This could be the year that they bring out the Hololens again and show us Minecraft for the fifteenth time. No, um, wait. You mean you don't have Minecraft on every platform, including your shoe? I would laugh if, like, I lift my foot. You look like, down and you like see mi- Minecraft. It's like a Minecraft sticker, like, stuck to my foot. Like, oh, God. Anyway. He's everywhere. Cool. Yeah, all right. Here we are. This has been the Tech Me Podcast. I've been Ken O'Connor. I have been present and very sleepy. Yes, Brian just woke up for this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Please leave feed- feedback anywhere where this is posted. I don't know where it's going to be posted yet. Probably YouTube. Let us know in the comments down below. And uh, we will see you next time. Goodbye. Tech Mate. Oh, I see what you did there.